McCain worked closely with President Obama's Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. They'd been colleagues in the Senate, traveled extensively together, and became good friends. I spoke with her about their time together. We did have a chance to really you know, share some of the experiences that come with uh, being at the highest levels of American politics. Is there something that, that stuck with you about the conversations that you had about those experiences at the highest level of politics? Uh, John and I started traveling together on his very famous Senate Codels. He liked to try out different colleagues to see whether they were good traveling companions. And I admit to being a little surprised when he first approached me and said, would you like to travel? And I immediately said, sure, I think that would be uh, quite an experience. And during those long, long flights, we had a lot of time uh, to talk. We talked about the unfairness that sometimes infects our politics. Uh, if you were his friend, he would stand up for you, he would defend you. Uh, he didn't like the personal attacks that went along with uh, uh, politics that became increasingly common. Uh, and I knew how painful it had been for him with the attacks on his family, and obviously he knew what it was like for me. We basically said, look, this is not the way politics should be conducted. We should be arguing over issues and differences, and we shouldn't be denigrating people. We shouldn't be lying about people's families. We shouldn't be uh, using the personal uh, to really substitute for the political. And as long as I've known him, that's uh, what he's tried to do. You bonded over a lot of policy issues, particularly serving together on the Armed Services Committee. Yes, we did. One was taking care of our troops, understanding the military strategy in Iraq and Afghanistan. I had a memorable trip with him to both countries in 2005. And traveling with John was great, because if a door didn't open, he just started banging on it until it <laughs> fell. Uh, so if we wanted to see somebody and the ambassador or the general didn't want us to see that person, I can guarantee you after John was done making the case, uh, we would see them. Uh, but it was poignant, because seeing John uh, with soldiers was really seeing him in his element. Uh, they knew his story. They respected him. Uh, he felt very protective toward them. So every time I went anywhere with him, I learned something. And we had fun. And we laughed a lot. Uh, we had some drinking uh, associated with our fun. You got to tell me about the vodka shots. Well, our most famous uh, experience with vodka shots was in Tallinn, Estonia. And, of course, we were there because John understood that Estonia was right on the front lines with Russia. And although we all hoped that Russia would be a, a good partner, we had reason to be concerned. So we uh, spent a memorable night uh, in a, a hotel right on the old square in Tallinn doing uh, vodka shots. So, And I've, I've heard or I've seen reported <laughs> that it was your idea. Oh, I would not take credit for it. I think it, I think it was a mutually agreed upon uh, venture. But we used to say what happens in Tallinn stays in Tallinn. <laughs> 2008. Mm -hmm. For a long time, people thought that the two of you were going to go up against each other. We did. I think we both thought that. I thought it would have been a great campaign because we both respected each other. We'd worked with each other. And in that campaign that eventually did happen uh, with Senator McCain running against then Senator Obama, uh, I so respected John because, you know, when uh, his supporters uh, got carried away and started making racial or religious comments about uh, then Senator Obama or Mrs. Obama, he would just shut him down. He's an Arab. He is not. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma no, ma he's a. He's a, he's a decent family man, citizen, that I just happen to have disagreements with. You know, he would not go along with that kind of talk. What did that tell you about John McCain? Well, it was so in keeping with who John McCain is. You know, John believes so deeply in fundamental fairness. Uh, he can, you know, he can get really wrought up and be upset with people, and he can sometimes say things he later regrets. Did that, that ever happen with you? Well, occasionally. but. Overall, he's a very honorable person, and he has deep integrity that really does lead him to defend those he thinks are wrongly accused. 
I saw that with respect to my own staff. You know, because of our traveling together, he got to know uh, Huma Abedin, who has worked with me. And then when some on the far right began to attack her and make all these accusations against her, which were, you know, totally fraudulent, uh, John McCain went to the floor of the Senate and defended her. And I will never forget that, because that's who he is. The concession speech that mm. John McCain gave in 2008. I urge all Americans who supported me to join me in not just congratulating him, but offering our next president our goodwill and earnest effort to find ways to come together. People close to McCain have told me that when he travels, people he meets quote that speech back to him, particularly in places where they're striving to be, like America. Um, what did that speech mean to you, particularly about him? That he's a great patriot and that he understands that our democracy has to be protected and defended every day. He wanted to make clear, not just to his supporters, but to all Americans and indeed to the world audience, that we have elections in America and we are proud of our democracy. We have a winner and we have a loser. And if you're on the losing side, you speak up and do your part to uh, try to keep uh, our democracy going. Did you? study his speech, his concession speech, or think about it when you had to give yours? I did think about it. I thought that it was, it was such a, a tribute to who he is as a man, as a, as a political leader. And as you know, in my concession speech, I tried to reach out to my supporters, including particularly uh, little girls and young women, that they not get discouraged, that their voices mattered. Uh, so I tried to uh, speak in a way that would uh, create the same sort of reaction, even from people who were incredibly upset about what happened, didn't know what happened, couldn't figure it out. Uh, and, and I did want to give uh, the president-elect all the opportunity in the world to uh, transition from being a partisan and whipping up the feelings, the anger, the resentment, the fears of the people who supported him, to being a president for all the people. That's what John McCain would have done had he won. What's John McCain's legacy? A warrior patriot. You know, when I first started traveling with John, I saw in a very personal way how, you know, he couldn't lift his arm. He couldn't comb his hair. Uh, he, had, he had trouble physically because of the torture and the injuries that he endured in the service of our country. I saw the same grit and commitment that made him turn down early release from uh, the Hanoi Hilton prison in Vietnam. I saw someone who revered uh, the values of our country. And he's always thinking about America's place in history and America's place in the world. I saw his passion and his love, his love of his family, his love of our country, his love of the friends that he uh, has made over the years. And he is a patriot, regardless of party. He is a patriot, and I am honored that he's also my friend. We've heard many words to describe John McCain, hero, statesman, fighter, patriot. But the label he most reveled in, especially during his political campaigns, is, of course, Maverick. Next, our panel of reporters shares their memories of and with John McCain. <laughs>